Hey guys, Winston for Carbide 3D here. Two weeks ago, I was directed to come up with a Carbide Create project to teach on our weekly livestream. Remembering that George had asked for a pen case for his small but growing collection of fancy writing implements, I decided to fulfill that request. However, after browsing Pinterest and Etsy for inspiration, I couldn't get over my lack of hardware, specifically low profile or concealed hinges. I didn't have anything suitable for attaching a lid to the rest of the case. So I got creative. Instead of a lid that flips open along the long edge like a hot dog bun, I decided I would have the lid swivel open about a pivot point and latch with embedded magnets. This is the design I came up with and there are three parts we need to machine. The body of the case, the lid, and the pin that holds everything together. Let's go over how these components were modeled. The body of the case takes this stylized hexagon shape to help reduce the visual bulk of unused real estate in the corners. I'm using equilateral triangles to trim off the corners using boolean subtraction. Inside the body, I'm going to create a slot shape that can hold the pen. You can make this as either a rectangle with radius corners or a regular rectangle combined with circles on the end. To create some space for your fingers to retrieve a pen, I'll draw in a circle to make some clearance. Since I want this recess to be a little shallower than the slot, I'll refrain from using the boolean union operation to merge the two features together. I'll be using a quarter inch diameter pin to hold the lid to the body and a quarter inch diameter magnet as the latch. I'll model these in as circles placed in opposite corners. This is really all I need to make the body, which will be machined from three quarter inch maple. But while I'm working with my maple stock, I might as well also machine the flanged pin that will hold the lid captive. This is going to be modeled as a quarter inch diameter circle concentric to a 3 8 inch circle. However, for my ease of toolpathing, I'll draw in one more circle that has a diameter of 0.625 inches. In the toolpathing workspace, I'll start by pocketing down the entire area within my 5 8 inch circle by about an eighth of an inch. I don't need a pin that's as long as the material is tall. Immediately below that, I'll pocket at the area between the main shaft of my pin and the 5 8 inch circle. This will go down to within 0.1 inches of the bottom of the stock. And then from that intermediate depth until the bottom of the stock, I'll just do a contour around the 3 8 inch flange. This will all be with an eighth inch end mill, and here's what those operations look like when run on a CNC. Next up, while I still have that 8th inch end mill loaded up, I'll face my stock down using an oversized pocketing operation. This pen case's body will only be 11 16 of an inch tall. If you have material that's already the perfect thickness, you won't need to do this, but unless you have a thickness planer and a longer board that you intend to run through it, machining a smaller piece of stock down to the final thickness is your best bet. Then I'll pocket out the magnet and pinholes as well as contour around the body of the pen case. This is what all that looks like. And then we can switch to a ball nose end mill to pocket out the rest of the features. I'll apply a pocketing toolpath to the main slot that goes down 9 16 of an inch from the top surface of the body. That means when I'm plugging in my final depth of cut, I need to account for the additional 16 of an inch between the top of the case and the top of the stock. Again, if your stock were exactly the same thickness as your project, this would be a lot easier and you wouldn't have to do as much math. But quarantined makers can't be choosers. For my finger recess, I'll only need to pocket down a total of 9 16 of an inch, starting 1 16 of an inch below the surface since that part of my stock was already removed. To save a little bit of time, I also split my circle into two so that my end mill spends less time floating over the already machined slot. However, while these toolpaths are quite fast, the large default step over used will result in scallops at the bottom of the pockets. So to clean those up and still leave a nice soft radius along the bottom edge of the pockets, I'll manually duplicate the pocketing operations and run them to the same depth in a single step down but with a much smaller step over. This is what that looks like. There was an issue around the finger recess with my wood tearing out during the pocketing operation with the ball end mill. This could have been avoided by cutting the finger recesses first. The machining of the slot is easier on the wood since the cutting forces imparted by the end mill will be mostly parallel to the grain of the wood. Now what about for the lid? Well, it is the exact same shape, so I'll duplicate my project file, remove what I don't need, and add in what I do need. 
In this case, I don't need the pen slot or the finger holes, and I will need an additional circle that will form the counterbore from my retaining pin. My starting material will be roughly 3 eighths of an inch thick, but my lid is actually going to be thinner, closer to 0.2 inches. So as before, I'll need to thin out my material to the final thickness of my lid before machining in the rest of the features. Then I'll continue to use contours and pockets to cut out the pivot hole in the upper left corner, and then cut out the profile of the lid. And finally, if I flip over my part and reposition it in the same place relative to the origin, I can machine a circle at this coordinate. This will be exactly where my magnet needs to go. I happen to cut a little too deep in the previous operation, so I can see the outline of the lid in its previous orientation. Those lines can be used as guides, so I can line up my lid's edges with the origin. If you didn't make a mistake like me, you could always use the touch probe to pick up the position of the lower left-hand corner of the lid. With these three pieces all machined out, we can now do a little sanding to make sure everything is smooth and ready for finish. To class things up a bit, I put a very light chamfer on the edges with my router table. I'm going to apply a little tongue oil finish to the surfaces since I want a relatively natural appearance on the wood, and I want the finish to be thin so it doesn't affect the fit of all the components. I glued in a pair of magnets with some thick CA glue in the requisite holes. Once that's dry, I can glue in my pivot pin, making sure to apply glue to the hole and not to the pin. Otherwise, you might get squeeze out that'll lock the lid to the case. And that basically wraps up this pen case project. It's a simple yet reasonably stylish design if I do say so myself. You could also easily jazz it up with an engraving on the lid or use a shiny metal pin for the pivot. With a few modifications for manufacturability and batch production, I could easily see this as an item at a craft fair or sold online. And it was all designed and programmed in Carbide Create. I hope this project gives you some ideas of your own. Until next time, good luck and have fun machining, folks.